welcome to another painting tutorial for how to paint Drazar. For this tutorial you will require a pot of contrast medium, pterodon turquoise, black templar, shayish purple, basilicanum grey, agaros dunes, magos purple, warp lightning green, orc flesh, talisar blue, wildwood, skeleton horde, flesh terrors red, blood angels red, Iron Warriors, Iron Hand Steel, Retributor Armor, Liberator Gold, Grey Seer, Evil Sun Scarlet, Baharoth Blue, Moot Green, also in Grey, and Tyrant Skull. So the first thing we're going to do when painting Drazar is we're going to focus on his armor. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Pterodon Turquoise. I'm going to give this an all over coat on all of his armor panels. So we're just going to grab some of that Pterodon Turquoise and we're just going to start painting it on. I'm going to start here on the leg. And we want to do this all over these armor panels. So we just want to start painting that pterodon turquoise all over the armor panels, like so. With that pterodon turquoise applied, he, well, it looks nothing like Drazar, but don't worry, we're now going to darken down all of those armor panels. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Black Templar, but we're not just going to give it an all over coat like we would normally doing in our armor panels. What we're going to do is we're going to use a small brush and then we're just going to be very, very carefully use the Black Templar and paint the flats of the panels, but leave the edges. So we're just going to start here on the leg, for example, and we're just going to very carefully paint this Black Templar over the panel leaving the edge with its bluish highlight. Similarly again down the other side, like so. So the Black Templar will be nice and dark and the Pterodon Turquoise has supplied our highlight for us. So similarly again on the next panel up, we're just going to very carefully paint this Black Templar all over the flat of the panel like this. This is a much quicker way of doing this armour than it would be to highlight it all. like so. I'm just going to keep going around every armor panel like this. With that black Templar applied, you can see we've got some really cool looking armor. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to I do a little bit of a spot highlight on just the sharpest bits with some thinned down Baharoth blue. And all we're going to do is we're just going to pick the absolute tips of these armor panels and just add a little bit of Baharoth blue, like so, just to make them look really sharp, like so. So you just want to keep going around, finding all of these sharp points, like so, and just applying this little bit of Baharoth blue. And with that, the armor is now complete. So what we're going to do is move on to the swords. Uh, and the application that we did for the armor is broadly similar, but for the swords, what we're going to do is we're going to use warp lightning green, and we're going to use this in the recess of the, of the blades. And then we're going to go over the sword, the flats of the swords, with the Black Templar. And the reason we're doing it in this order is that the green interacts quite weirdly with Black Templar when it kind of ends up on top. So we're just doing it, we're blocking this in now. 
So as previously mentioned, we're going to use black Templar on the flat of the blade. And so we're just going to take some on our brush and we're just going to start painting this all over the sword until we get up to that inscription, at which point we want to be quite careful with how we're applying it. So we don't want too much on the brush so that we can have uh, as much control as possible. And you just want to very carefully use the black Templar to cover over everywhere but the recessed inscription on the blade. So we're just very carefully going around that green to give us a nice glowing effect. And to finish off the flats of the blades, we're going to use some thinned down moot green. We just want a very little bit of it. And we're just going to, in the recesses, where possible, just add some of this paint. And with that, all of the black is done. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to actually clean up at this point. So all of the places where we've got a color that we don't want it to be. Um, so for example, on these kinds of dangly bits of cloth from his armor, the, uh, the mask, we're just going to clean it all up with some gray sear. Uh, so I'm just going to find some splodges where I inevitably got some on places like the hair as I was adding the pterodon turquoise. And I'm just using some thin down grey sear to just tidy up all of those mistakes. Next up we're going to paint in all the gold details and for this we're using some thin down retributor armour. This is things like his pauldron up here and his knee pads as well and all the various um, cracked soul stones and things that you can find all over the model. Once that retributor armour is dry we're going to give it a shade of Agaros Dunes. Thank you to Adam Hughes for this tip um, and I Give it a good test and it really works. So we just take the Agaros dunes and we paint it all over the Retributor armor. Once that Agaros dunes is dry, we're gonna give all that gold a highlight with some thin down Liberator gold. So we're just gonna run our brush along the edges of all of these gold details, like so. When it comes to painting the cracked soul stones, it's a good idea to just try and put some of the Liberator gold on the bit that's going to be shiny, as this makes when we put the contrast paint over the top of it, uh, it does quite a lot more of the work for us uh, rather than having to kind of highlight the gems up and it'll make them nice and shiny. So we're just going to head around all of these gold details with this liberated gold and then we're going to move on. With those gold highlights applied we're now going to move on and do all the purple parts and for this we're going to be using Shaiish purple and this is for all of the various tabards and things you can see and bits of cloth hanging off of Trazar. So we're just going to very carefully around all those colors we've already painted, just add a nice even coat of Shaiish purple. You don't want to use too much because Shaiish purple is quite a dark color. So we just kind of want A nice even finish on it 
so we can still retain some of that purple. Because if you do too much of it, it starts to look black. So just like that. Similarly again, on this large tabard here, you only kind of really want to do one single coat, so you just kind of want to make contact with the model and just pull it down. Same again, make contact and pull it down. Just pulling off the excess with my brush wherever I see it. Once that shayish purple is dry, we're going to do all of the silver parts in this. We're going to be using some thinned down iron warriors. And this is for all of the blades and spikes and things that are on Drazzar. So you just want to very careful near that black that we've already painted in on the blade. Just paint the Iron Warriors. Like so. And next up we want to shade all of that silver with Basilicanum Grey. So starting on the blade, we just take our brushful, we make contact with the model, and pull it along. Once that's dry, we're going to give all that silver a highlight of iron hand steel. So I've thinned some down on my palette, and all I want to do is just grab the edge of these blades, like so. Just want to just like this. Give it that kind of wicked edge that you would imagine a blade like this would have. Once all that silver is nice and shiny and complete and looking, well, wicked, <laughs> um, the next thing we're going to do is paint in his hair. And for this, we're going to be using Flesh Terror's Red. And this is for the hair that goes underneath his, his kind of ponytail, but also his like weird like tails, tail feathers. So we're just going to paint the flesh terrors red all over these hair strands, like so. And once that flesh terror is red is dry, we're going to give all of that red a highlight with some Evil Sun Scarlet. So we just take some on our brush and we just pick out the sharpest parts of these hair strands. And we just run the brush along them. So we just pick them out like that. So just keep going around, finding all of these little bits. That done, the hair is now pretty much complete. The only thing left to do is to do these little ties that are holding it in. And this is also a good time to do all of the little strings that are holding various pendants and things off of his armor on the back. And for this color, it's gonna be Black Templar. So we just wanna be really careful as we do this, because um, we don't wanna just kind of get Black Templar all over everything, but we just wanna very carefully put the Black Templar over these areas. Um, using just a little bit of mount and a slightly smaller brush. Like so. So you just want to go around and do all of these little bits. With those straps all done, it's now time to move on to his horns. And for this, we're going to be using four different things at once. We're going to be using Contrast Medium, Skeleton Horde, Wildwood and Black Templar. 
And the reason for this is because we want a nice kind of casual fade going throughout the, the whole of the horn. Um, and we kind of want to do it in one go, as it were. So the first thing we do is we take contrast medium, we paint it all over. Then we add a layer of skeleton horde going up about a, th a third of the way, then some wildwood, and then some black templar on the tip. And the contrast medium will blend it all together. So we take the contrast medium first, and we paint it onto the horn. So we just want to give it all over the horn. Kind of like this. So you just want to get contrast medium all over it. Like so. We give our brush a quick wash. Then, whilst it's still wet, we take con the skeleton hoard and we just pick up into a point, so around about there, and we add the skeleton hoard. Like so. We just make sure that we do it on the back as well. Like that. So once that skeleton hoard is on there, we take some wild wood and then just around where the two colours meet, we just add another like so and go all the way up to the top because we can put the black templar over it later like this and that's our wildwood coat then whilst it's still wet we take this area and we just start Blending the two together so it's not quite as stark. Like that. And then to finish it off, we take some black Templar and just on the tip of the horn, we add it in, like that. There we go. And should you want to kind of make that blend a little bit more, um, sort of come kind of more gradual around here, just take a little bit more skeleton hoard and just apply it where the two meet. Once those horns are dry, the next thing we're gonna do is his face mask. And the first thing we're gonna do is use a roughly six to one mix of Magos Purple and Contrast Medium. I'm gonna use this as the shade for the mask. Um, it's gonna be really thin when it's on your palette. Um, and that's okay, because that's exactly what we want, because we do want this to be a really subtle purple shading on the white. So we're just gonna paint this purple all over the mask. Like so. Once that purple is dry, we're gonna brighten it right back up using some old Suan Gray. We're just going to do this, not as a highlight, but this is going to be all over the panels because we just want that purple shading to kind of just be in the subtle areas. So we want to leave deepest recesses with that kind of purple tint, but we want to cover back over most of the mask with this ultra and grey. Once that also in grey has been applied and it's brightened that mask right back up, we're going to finish it off with some orc flesh. And this is going to be for the groove that runs down the middle of the helmet and across his eyes. So you want to be very careful here. We don't want very much on our brush at all. But using the orc flesh, 
I'm just going to brace our hand and we're just going to place the orc flesh inside that groove, like so. And we just want to be very careful as we do this. But we want to get the whole thing, including the little splits that come down here, like so. And then finally, just to finish it off, we want to use just a tiny little bit of old soon gray and we want to use it as the kind of lens part. So we just want to right in here, draw a little line going across the center like that. And with that, the last couple of things to do are all of the various way stones, spirit stones, I should say, scattered around the model, and then of course the base. But for the spirit stones, we're gonna be using Warp Lightning Green, Blood Angels Red, Talisar Blue, and Magos Purple. And really, the box art can help you out here, but all you wanna do, because we highlighted those uh, split spirit stones with the Liberator Gold um, way back when we were doing the gold, is we just want to take our color of choice and just paint it very carefully over the gemstone part of these of these spirit stones like so and the liberator gold will shine through um, quite usefully so we're just gonna go around and pick out all of these red ones that we want to be red like so I'm going to keep using my box art. So now we're going to do the base and we're going to use Basilicon and Grow for all of the stonework, uh, excluding this rune, uh, the runes that you can see just there in between these kind of main struts. So we're going to use Basilicon and Grow for the rest of it. So this is for all of these stones down here. and the main part of these stone struts. Once that Basilicanum grey is dry, we're gonna paint in the runes with some Agaros dunes. We don't want too much, we don't want this to be too thick a coat because we want it to be quite smooth. So I'm gonna pick an area to start and I'm gonna start up here against this vine. And I'm just gonna make contact with the model I'm just going to pull the Agaros dunes across it like that. I'm just going to keep doing that until I get the right coverage that I want. So that kind of thing. Like that. Once that Agaros dunes is dry, we're going to add some Orc flesh to all those vines. Uh, just creeping out all around the model. Next, we use some rich butyrama to paint in this little sigil here on the floor. As you can see, I've added some uh, Sterling Battlemire to the base because the last thing I want to do is give all of these details on the base a dry brush of the same color. And this is going to be Tyrant Skull. And I'm just going to very lightly run my dry brush all over all of these details, including those vines, just to blend all of these colors together with the same highlight. And to give the impression that the same kind of dust has blown up on all of these details. So there you have it. He is now officially all finished. Um, I think he looks pretty fantastic, if I do say so myself. I know I say that in every single video, and that's because I'm constantly astounded by the results that you can achieve with contrast paints. And um, this was a really good model to paint with contrast because most of it is actually just using different techniques with the contrast paints and 
um, not a lot in the way of kind of the classic technique, um, not like with power armor, for example, where you do quite a lot of edge highlighting. Um, but yeah, I'm so very, very, very pleased with how he's come out. Um, this is the partner video to Jane Zar, who also came around at pretty much the same time. And when you put the two together, they look fantastic. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one.